go. Uh, what's going on, guys? It's your boy, Sesame. There's a video here today. Bring us a Photoshop to make your very own cool, I guess, like changing, you know, the skin of character skins or even like jersey swaps. And basically, what I'm teaching you in today's video is kind of like almost in a way manipulating whatever you guys want to actually change a cool skin, whether from your favorite game or just kind of make it your own. Like, make it like a cool team oriented kind of skin that might not be in the game already. Or even, like I said before, like jersey swaps, like NFL, like changing the jersey, you know, change the jersey numbers, all that kind of stuff is pretty much the same exact premise that I use for like a Valorant skin that I've been doing lately by the way so what it basically is just me kind of taking my 100 Thieves team that I designed for and like kind of incorporating their kind of asset kind of design you know thought process and like making it to a real kind of skin in game whether it's not real or not it's just a really cool thing for people to kind of see and enjoy and it's also really therapeutic for me it's just a very fun thing overall like whether if you kind of combine like your favorite traditional esport team like you know Yankees or something like that and you want to put it in like your favorite game from like I don't know like Rainbow Six or something like that you just combine those two things those two things can happen with today's video it's a really fun like kind of concept and I hope you guys do enjoy it here today you might hear some fireworks outside they're like just going off bro so if you hear them I apologize that's all I love you guys but I'll talk to you guys later and I hope you guys do enjoy that's it <laughs> I hate this I hate this all right guys so first thing is first that's pretty much blocking off everything that you would like to change the color of and the texture of Prior to even changing colors, blocking things off can actually help you guys speed up the process of actually seeing all the things at once and kind of seeing the end result a lot quicker. Only thing I would say to keep in mind is when you guys are color blocking is making sure you actually make a new layer for each part and name each layer that you also make, that way you actually do not get lost. Whether or not you guys end up using the pen tool in order to precisely cut out the areas that you would like to change, you can also simply use a 100% harness brush to fill in, almost like a coloring book, that way you guys can actually color the places that you would like to end up changing as well. Each idea honestly ends up working, but just nothing will work unless you actually remember to make a new layer. Just saying, be sure to make a new layer for every single part, okay? I promise. I also like to use the hue and saturation by pressing Ctrl U on your keyboard in order to actually bring up the hue and saturation table just to change the colors of some of the actual parts that you might end up using. That way you guys can see everything separated and actually makes it a lot more easy for you guys to tell which areas can actually be changed. And once you guys are done with blocking everything off, the tedious part is pretty much done. Now it's going to be all fun and you guys are going to realize that, you know, blocking everything off makes it a lot more easier in the end result. And let's just jump right into it. All right, guys, now it's time for me to actually hop in and actually help you guys out. Now they have everything nice and colored and blocked off. You're basically good to go, right? The entire rest of this video should be incredibly easy and fun for you. Basically, just because now you have the hard part done. Now it's just the fun designing part of it. So the one thing I'm going to end up doing is actually going to hide all of the actual selections I have on, on the right hand side, right? In my layers. Because what I already have is I already have it named. So if I want my shirt, which I'm going to do first, I can just click on it and say, hey, all this I'm actually having highlighted here, right? I can notice and clicking on and off to be like, hey, that is going to be now what I'm going to change the color of, right? So what I end up doing is I'm going to turn that off for a second because um, I really just I don't need it on, right? I'm going to hold control on my keyboard and I'm going to select the thumbnail of the word shirt, the shirt layer, right? And that will give you the marquee selection of exactly what we had colored in that actual layer. So what I can do now is go to my half circle down here, which is my adjustments, right? And then it goes to gradient map. So, with gradient map, just in case you guys do not know, gradients are a little bit difficult sometimes to actually understand, but on your left hand side is usually your shadow color, on your right hand side is usually your highlight color, which actually ends up having whatever kind of tone of color you end up putting on that right hand side. So, if you guys look at this example here, what I have with the green and the, the black kind of gradient going on here, you guys will notice the gradient itself kind of looks really weird and neon and glowy, and that is simply because it actually ends up, we, we accidentally, or in the sense, we put the highlights and the shadows in reverse or inverse. So that's why this reverse uh, kind of symbol is here. So if I click on this right now, you guys will notice now the black will be where it needs to be because the black will be the shadow and the green will be the highlight. And now it looks way, way, way more realistic. I think a lot of the times, a lot of you guys do not understand that concept of how gradients actually end up working and how to get the most cleanest kind of like, you know, realistic idea of getting a nice color on something else. So for example, if you don't have it on reverse, basically when you end up going to make your actual gradient on your left hand side is your darker color. In my, t uh, in my sense, I'm going to put black. If you guys want to put like an undertone, like a nice, you know, darker green to like, you know, a lighter blue, whatever, just make sure it doesn't really pretty much go past like this line right here. Honestly, like right here, you know, don't go past around here, but black is a pretty good start. So I'm going to press OK. And on my right hand side over here, this is where I can choose any color in the world, right? I'm going to click over here. I'll make it red just like so. Press OK. And you guys will notice now I can actually make this part of this actual shirt red. Now, there's two ways you can actually make it darker. 
either you can take your highlight and your shadows and have it be favored the shadow more in this gradient. So what I mean by that is if I take this midpoint here, if I move this towards the right hand side, it will favor the shadow more and make it more darker. So you can see right here, it makes it a lot more darker. So if I want to go ahead and just leave my midpoint alone, I can just go ahead and go back into my color. And whether you have like a nice high pigmented color like I have right here, you can see like it's almost on the top right, right? All I have to do is just take this hat little circle here, drag it down below towards the middle. And of course, then you can get a more of a kind of darker uh, red tone or whatever color you end up choosing a darker tone of it. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the basics of how to actually use gradients, just in case. I see a lot of you guys out there. Um, of course, like when I started doing this a few weeks ago or so, yeah, I see more people kind of doing it and having a little bit of fun with it. And uh, so gradients, bro, I can tell you don't know how to use them sometimes. It's just I, one of those mental things to realize. Left-hand side, shadows. Right-hand side, highlights. That's all you have to end up remembering, okay? Just so we know. All right, guys, so I actually want to show you guys a really quick little thing. If you guys do not know, it'll hopefully save one of you guys' life. If you're new to Photoshop, I, I got you. Watch this, okay? Now, let's just say in this case right here on my jet skin, on her glove, you can kind of see this cool little kind of logo here. But let's just say I want to put my own logo there, and I want it to kind of look way more kind of kind of customized to what I want to end up, like what I want to put on her glove, right? Now, whether it could be like an NFL jersey, you want to remove a number, or let's just say like in this case, this sweater here, the word ninja, you want to get rid of it completely, but also you want to use a clone stamp because sometimes the clone stamp is buggy, looks weird looks too unrealistic watch this okay what i'm gonna do is i make a duplicate of my jet render i'm gonna right click and use uh rasterize layer right here just like so just so because of course smart object does not work for this so you have to make sure it's a rasterize layer then i'm gonna use the lasso tool which is l on your keyboard which is located right here the lasso tool then where basically want to end up cutting something out i'm gonna go ahead and just use my lasso tool and go around it just like so okay i'm gonna say hey i want all this Right, and you can see I'm giving it a little more space as well. I would say about two or so pixels to kind of allow Photoshop to kind of get it correct. And also kind of like, you know, of course, everything surrounding you also want to make sure it's not too close to anything else because it will kind of make it look really weird and odd. But once you guys have it selected, you want to right click, fill, drop down this content uh, content, and use content aware and also make sure your blending mode is at 100%, okay? Then you want to press okay and you guys will notice, ta-da, Photoshop will actually fix Get rid of it and do it for you guys. Now, I already know this is gonna happen, but watch this when I try to do it for this one down here. So content aware is not the best thing in the world and the use, uh, you know, it's not gonna be perfect every single time, but it can it can be damn where near like, kind of like perfect. But for this instance here, I'm gonna do the same exact thing, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and right click, fill content aware, and it should mess up, ta-da, you see it kind of messes up. So content aware is not perfect, but in this case here, you kind of want to kind of, sometimes just needs a little bit more taming or a little more kind of like steps to finish it off. But if I go here again, just go over it, content aware, boom, go over it again over here, content aware, boom. So it just takes a few more steps rather than kind of like doing it one kind of one off. But uh, if it ends up messing up too much, sometimes the best thing you guys can do is if you guys have this over again, just go over one by one and then use content aware, not kind of do it all at once, but it all depends on what you actually end up cutting out. But most of the times it works damn well near perfect. And you can see how I did it for the first one here and also still looks really good down here. But we had to do a few more steps. So keep in mind, content aware is literally a savior. If you guys do not know, it actually helps me a lot when I, of course, when I want to change the skin itself, put things in there, things, you know, take things out. And uh, yeah, just want to put that out there just so you guys know, okay? And honestly, guys, at this point, it's pretty much all good to go. You guys already know all the cool things to kind of do. If I wanted to go again, just kind of go over it. Control click and let's go with the armor this time. Right, we'll go into the adjustments here, gradient map. I'll change this to a cool kind of, let's just get delete, delete this, right? We'll go over here. Boom, make a nice little gray here. Now I'll say I'll go to her collar, let's go to her collar, collar. Right, we'll take this, gradient map. Now if I wanna go ahead and make a black and white, just in case, so you can see right here, right? It's a more towards, of course, this is a black gradient to a gray gradient. If I wanna make more of a white tone or, or white color, you wanna take your shadow color and just basically take the actual sort of like, uh, how do you say? Not keep it on your black ratio, but just basically up your shade tone to more of a more gray. Then you can, of course, up this up to a nice white right here. Then you can just, of course, take this and make sure your highlight is more of the, uh, or your white tone color on your right hand side, your highlight color, uh, the highlight white color, making sure I kind of like very clarify it, is of course more dominant over the actual gray tone. That will give you more of a kind of a white or, a, you know, so it doesn't look washed out, right? You don't want to just look like plain white. You do get rid of your shadows and highlights. That's how you kind of make a little bit of a white color. So uh, last but not least, we'll just put the collar collar in here, or excuse me, not the collar, but let's do the actual collar of her kind of shirt here. Gradient map as well. We'll take this, make a nice little black, right? And honestly, it just, you keep on building off of your actual gradient map kind of selection. So you can of course go all through your selections, hold control of them, you click on them, you add the gradient map, you kind of go through it. Of course, you wanna add logos and stuff to it as well. You can put it on top of it. Now also to keep in mind, if you wanna put on, let's just say on the vest right here, 
right? I can just take a nice little uh, pattern here as well. And with the pattern, I can just make this a little bit more smaller, of course, for us. Let's just uh, make that super small, right? And also just make it white for your eyes, just for now, just like so. You can also put textures over your gradients and also clipping mask them to your actual gradient. So if I wanna hold Alt, just like so, select right in between these two layers or just right click clipping mask, right? You can also clipping mask gradients or patterns or textures or whatever to the actual gradient itself. You don't actually have to kind of cut it out perfectly. You can just honestly just clipping mask it to the gradient. And uh, you know, it looks pretty freaking dope. You can do like really cool line textures. You can, like I said, you can do literally like grunge textures if you wanna make it more grungy. It's one of those things that you can build on continuously and continuously and whatever any other ideas that you might have, also might look freaking dope so don't like kind of get rid of it and kind of like say eh whatever but give it a shot you might not know what you like until you actually end up trying it so it's one of those things you just keep on building with it have a little bit of fun with it and it's just super fun to kind of like work with of course i've been doing it on stream a lot recently and tweeting it out a lot of people having a lot just having a lot of fun with like me doing their characters making it for certain teams i'm currently doing it for my hundred thieves team um esport organization excuse me and it's just like one of those things it's super freaking fun just to learn how to do and it's like again if you're, if you're more into like the, the actual traditional sports you can do jersey swaps do a little bit of clickbait or be like hey you put your favorite player on your actual kind of like new you know favorite teams like uh jersey change the color of it change the number change the like the text the logo all that stuff it's a super fun thing to just kind of do relaxing and it's one of those things i hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today i want to end the video because fireworks bro they're kind of going nuts and i want i don't want to i know it's probably a little bit annoying on the freaking video but hopefully you didn't hear it too much but with that being said i love you guys so freaking very much and happy fourth of july i know it's of course a day later but uh happy fourth of july weekend if you guys had a lot of fun with it hopefully you guys just chilled and stood home most probably did nothing different but i love you guys i'll tell you guys later since my hq out don't forget to keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking dr guys later much freaking love and i think next week is my merch launch maybe Hint, hint, if you guys want to, of course, know, follow me on Twitter. I promise you guys, it's going to be super freaking dope, and I can't wait for you guys to actually hold it, love it, wear it, smell it. Yep, and uh, that's it. I'll tell you guys later. Peace.